yesterday, all eyes were trained on Canberra as Julia Gillard gave us the long-awaited details of the carbon tax package. This was Julia Gillard's opportunity to stand up and say, I'm the Prime Minister, I have a vision, and this is where we're going. How did she go on that score? She did a great job. The first thing she had to do was overcome the enormity of the carbon tax debate. The carbon tax debate had been raging for months and it divided many people. Very few people understood it. To get over this hurdle, Julia Gillard had to simplify the argument down to its most simple concept. And she did that very well. She used the line, We will require around 500 big polluters to pay a price for every tonne of carbon pollution they put into our atmosphere. With that sentence, the whole debate over several months had been boiled down to a simple concept of you put pollution in the sky, you have to pay for it. By taking such a complex debate and making it simple and easy for the audience to take hold of and buy, makes it easier for us to understand and eventually for her to go out and sell. The implications of the carbon tax is to take out 168 million tonnes of pollution from our atmosphere. Now, that's a bit difficult to get your mind around, so Julia Gillard has gone for an analogy to help her. She's used the analogy of 168 million tonnes of pollution in the atmosphere. Well, that's the equivalent of taking 45 million cars off the road. You use an analogy to explain a complex concept in terms of a simple concept. My problem with this analogy, though, is I can't get my head around the idea of 45 million cars any more than I can get my head around the idea of 168 million tonnes of pollution in the atmosphere. The analogy she used was good, but only halfway. How could it have been improved? Take the analogy of the cars and say, taking 45 million cars off the road is the equivalent of, a, of Australia never, ever having a motor vehicle. Any pollution in our skies from motor vehicles simply would not be there. That is the sort of impact taking 168 million tonnes of carbon out of the air will have. Making the analogy something that we can take hold of, we can understand, will make it easier for her to get the message across to us. The language that Julia used yesterday was visionary. It was specific and it was directed. Previously, it had been, the ALP wants to, the Labor Party believes. Yesterday, the language was a lot stronger, it was a lot simpler, and it got straight to the point. She used words such as, we will, I have decided, I believe. And she summed it up with, we are going to get this done. We are going to create a clean energy future. Simple words to create a simple vision for what it is that she's after. She's had a bit of coaching for this presentation and someone has come in and said you need to improve your body language. When Julia's body language is normal and natural it, it sort of sits around the centre part and there's nothing wrong with that. Someone has come in and told her that you need to extend your body language and what has happened is her body language when she does what she's been told to do doesn't look natural. She moves her hand like this. It looks awkward, it doesn't look genuine and it detracts from her position as a leader. Take a quick look at this. Causing sea levels to rise, they put into our atmosphere enough through a tax cut or payment increase to enable them to meet the average cost of carbon pricing on them and their family. When your body language is not natural and is not flowing from you, it detracts from your level of genuineness and people will spot that. They won't spot it consciously, but they will look at it and go, nah, something doesn't feel right, something doesn't seem right, I'm not going to trust it. Overall, Julia did a great job. She had a whiff at the end. What's in it for me? She said, Australian families on Sundays, they're at home relaxing. What's in it for you, they're asking? Well, go to this website and you will find out. She gave us a call to action, where to go to get more information. When you're standing up, being a leader, you need to have a call to action. She had the vision, she had the what's in it for me, and a call to action for us to go, right, this is what we need to do next. It's the first time in a long time that Julia has stepped up to the plate and been the leader that we, the Australian public, want her to be. When we look at Tony Abbott, though, unfortunately, it couldn't be any different.
Tony Abbott stood up for his press conference and gave more of the no stop, don't, it won't work, trust me, go with my plan. I've got a short bit of footage here for you to have a look at on Tony's message and there's two things I want you to pay attention to. When Tony doesn't believe what he's talking about, his body language matches every syllable he says. And he also goes for a lot of this. And whilst that's distracting, or whilst it detracts from his message, it's nothing compared to what he does to his own credibility and his own message at the end of this footage. Watch what he does with his eyes when he tells us that we are not going to achieve our carbon reduction targets. Now, what's crystal clear from the Prime Minister's announcement today is that millions of Australians will be worse off, even under the government's own modelling. And even under the government's own forecasting, we will not actually cut our emissions with this carbon tax emissions trading scheme. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the point of all of this uh, if millions of Australians are going to be worse off and we are not actually going to cut our emissions? We're not actually going to cut our emissions. When you're prosecuting a point, when you want to derive your message home, do you maintain eye contact with your audience and look at them in the eye and say, this is what I believe, this is where we're going? Or do you have that same message and look down and almost cower away from the eyes that are judging you? Tony Abbott doesn't believe in the message that he's putting forward. Now, there's two things that could be going on here. A, he simply doesn't believe the message that Julie Gillard is putting forward. Or he realises that he doesn't have a vision to stack up against the vision of Gillard's. I'm not saying Gillard's vision is right, but if Gillard has a vision and Tony realises that he doesn't, he will not believe in his ability to stand up and sell his message as it should. Your audience will pick up on whether or not you can sell your vision, whether you can sell your message. Tony Abbott doesn't have the belief to sell his vision, to sell his message in a way that he need, knows he needs to do. When you stand and speak, it is your ability as a presenter, as a speaker, that your audience will take on board for your belief in your ability to sell your message, to sell your vision. If you are in a leadership position and have to sell your message, your ability to stand up is paramount. Darren, Nick here. Um, I just got back from Hong Kong and uh, I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update. Um, the conference went really well. I was uh, very happy with how it all progressed. Um, I was a bit concerned about the scheduling of my session, which was actually scheduled to be the last session on the last day. And as a result, it kept me quite anxious for the whole week. However, all the prep work really didn't pay off and the session went really well. Um, as it happened, uh, being the final session meant that uh, it was my message that they were left with as they all returned home, which was probably a really good thing. And I must say that um, uh, the attendees were, were quite patient through the whole week. You know, every session was sort of like death by PowerPoint. Um, and as it turned out, um, I received quite a lot of good comments about um, my use of PowerPoint. Um, as you're probably aware, six slides and three of them were blank. And that really, really, really worked. So um, thanks very much indeed for all your help. And um, um, you know, I certainly wouldn't have been able to do this a couple of years ago without uh, all your assistance. So thanks again. Speak to you soon. Ciao.